Hello, welcome to ShakeTube 2018. Uh, this is uh, a uh, read-along, a four-week read-along of Shakespeare plays, uh, um, hosted by um, uh, Lucas of Totally Pretentious, uh, Jason of Old Blues Chapter and Verse, and Steve Donahue of Steve Donahue. Uh, and each week they've selected a play, a play to read, and then uh, invite us to join along, uh, read the read the play or plays, in my case, play. And then um, film your own video and discuss. I have indeed just picked the one play. I'm gonna. I'm starting off with Julius Caesar, that uh, schoolroom schoolroom favorite, uh, which actually I'll have more to say on. Uh, it's good to actually combine the three plays here. I'll I'll talk about uh, Titus Andronicus and uh, Henry the Fourth. Part one and part two uh, at the at the uh, near the end of the video because uh, they 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 make a good example they they uh, both both of those plays make a good uh, argument why Julius Caesar indeed Caesar Julius Caesar and Macbeth are probably you know top plays to uh, to uh, inflict upon poor uh, poor high school and uh, grade school students I don't know which students that get get inflicted upon it nowadays but yes so. Yeah, I've obviously I've read and I've seen the play before. I made a point of watching a watching a uh, production on YouTube before it may have, may have gotten. Yeah, watching a production on YouTube before reading the play, and I thought I found that helpful. It's it's always good to see these things. I think physically uh, done out because it, it it gives you the good good impact. I I, I have myself poised posed with a knife in my thumbnail and it's like you, you gotta remember that some poor dude gets stabbed a whole lot of times and just bleeds everywhere and even though the production i watched wasn't actually that gory um even just that acting out of that was uh it, it, it brought that home it brought that home to you that this is a uh, it's a political assassination but it's also just a murder it's a poor guy gets stabbed many many times on stage and you watch that and you watch the conspirators bathe their hands in blood and just the the visceral feel of that. Shakespeare's going to... Uh, the, that's the lovely thing about Shakespeare. Shakespeare will give you... Um, Brutus, the I idealist, uh, trying to like think, oh, I'm doing this because of... of I'm not doing this for personal reasons. I'm doing this for pr strictly a moral, political reasons. But then you have Brutus bathing his hands in blood in this thing. And, and, and you know, let's go forth and cry, you know, peace, freedom... And all this stuff, and you're thinking, wow, watching some guy come down the street, his hands bathed in blood. I'm not thinking peace and freedom. I'm thinking, holy crap. Uh, you know, which is interesting because um, I did I did uh, listen to a couple of lectures on this. And someone saying that, uh, you know, the especially the American tradition, I think it's, it's Thomas Jefferson of like, sometimes the, oh, I'm going to butcher whatever the quote. But basically it's about, you know that the, you know, that uh, liberty must be bathed in, with the blood of tyrants every once in a while. Well, like, you know, here is a man being butchered for supposedly freedom. And how does that make you feel? Is this suddenly, it's like, God help us from the idealists in some ways. Um, um, so, yeah, and, you know, this book, this this play starts out with, you know, Pompey is dead and uh, the, two the two guys who are like, stop celebrating this, this is gross. Uh, get executed for that by Caesar, who then, you know, gets gets his own gets his own comeuppance at the end. So there's there's a very much of a there's this uh, the the play does seem to be co talking about a cycle of you know they go th they're about to open up a whole can of whoop ass on themselves. We know from history this being a a, start, a history play of the Romans, uh, and this was a debated thing. It was like was this a great event that Caesar got killed or was this a was this a, um, a, t a terrible, a terrible act? You know, we're at a time when, you know, there are mo there's still monarchs around and monarchs don't think that that maybe wouldn't think that it's a great idea, but there's also this nascent thing of, Hey, we'd like, you know, democracy and, and, um, well, not even democracy, just like, you know, the educated, the educated landowner, white, white guys, well, in Britain, white guys who are like, let's, how about we as a, all it's like more of an oligarchy take control not just the single guy We're, we haven't gotten to the whole rabble thing yet and indeed in this in this uh, play you see the rabble um the audience shakespeare being very aware of how easy it is to manipulate an audience has some rather dark uh, dark uh i dark 
foreshadowings of how easily, if it was a democratic system, some demagogue, some Mark Anthony could just come up and whip everybody up into a frenzy and get them going and uh, unleash un unleash chaos. Um, so, you know, that that's the, I think this is a really great thing about Shakespeare is we're not going to give you an either and or. Is is Caesar, a, you know, is, is he that serpent in a serpent's egg? egg um or is he you know actually was he going to be actually not that bad and indeed when you look at sees that caesar there and you know that oh, okay uh, octavius is going to become augustus caesar at the very end of this and the ultimate ruler it's like could could you have almost you, you almost feel like oh uh, they could have almost skipped all that and just had caesar ruling people for a pax Rom pax romana for for a while i mean there wouldn't have been a republic uh, i mean that does seem to be how things were going there wasn't going to be a republic and they brutus decided no for an ethical way, I I have to I have to I have to resist this. Actually, I want I want to talk about Brutus and Cassius because I think especially reading this in high school, I was all on Brutus side. Brutus was like idealist, and it's like you know he was put, putting he was standing up for what he thought was right, and Cassius was this evil manipulator guy who who was just kind of he was doing whatever he took that was necessary to get like what basically his own self interests. Um, and he, indeed, at the beginning of this play, you 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 look at you look at Cassius and you think, oh, he's somebody who's manipulating things. You later on you hear that, oh, he's been kind of lining his pockets. He's he's um, not been helping out when he should, and uh, but you know he's very self interested. But he's like he's like looking at it now. It's like wow, this is actually this is a practical guy. This is this is the guy that like you know revolutions wouldn't happen without the practical guy who actually got things going and doing stuff. You know, Brutus, Brutus is all, are all very well and good as the idealist, but it's like, yeah, Cassius is behind the scenes saying like, yeah, no, we want Rome. He wants Rome because I, it's for his own self-interest. He wants to be a part of this larger, larger ruling cast class. He doesn't want to be under a single man who's calling all the shots and probably getting all the good stuff. So, you know, there's a very practical side to Cassius and also Cassius, um, as the play goes on, you, Brutus becomes, you, you start to see how cold, uh, Brutus is. Um, and I know there's a whole kind of Roman, uh, and just the ethical kind of stoicism thing of like, you know, okay, his wife dies, his, his wife commits suicide. And there's the whole Roman thing of, you know, it's, it's an honorable thing to commit suicide. And Lord knows everyone, there's a lot of people being honorable in this play at the end. Um, but, um, that, you know, it's interesting. You have Cassius going, my God, your wife died. That's terrible. And, Ca and Brutus is like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not. And he has a little explosions of anger, but it's like, no, he sucked, he sucks out all the in. And it's like, wow, it's, you become, it's a big, you start, I, I, I find myself shifting more and more over to Cassius. And indeed, you know, Cassius, um, his most, the, the, uh, the, uh, descriptor of him is that, you know, it's the, it's the Caesar. It's, it's, we, you know, a lot of times where we get our view of, of Cassius is that, that one line, Yon Cassius has a lean and hungry look. That's, Ca that's Caesar saying, I, I don't like that guy. And yeah, you know, it's like, here's Caesar. I do not know the man I should avoid so soon as that spare Cassius. He reads much. He is a great observer and he looks quite through the deeds of men. It's like, you know, that's something that's like Caesar's going, oh crap, that maybe that guy sees through my bullshit. Maybe that guy sees, sees how, how it's actually playing out. So, you know, we, 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 we allow Caesar in some ways to frame at the beginning. He's that, you know, the lean and hungry look. It's like lean and hungry look, but it's like he's somebody who sees. It's like, I, I think that is an interesting thing, uh, coming from Caesar, who is a guy with, uh, who's deaf in one ear, who, who doesn't, who, who, who isn't, he, who isn't hearing stuff and, um, you know, the, the, and hasn't, has, has all these, Caesar has all these infirmities, which, you know, then you can go into the whole thing of like, you know, how epilepsy was viewed at the time is whether it was a, uh, whether it was kind of a, you know, the, the malady, the maladies thing, but just to go back to Cassius, cause I think I might as well focus a little bit. I'll focus, keep my focus on Cassius. I'll try that you know he's somebody who actually he sees things and maybe and he is the one who ends up convincing or nudging brutus into the whole thing of no we got to get rid of caesar or caesar will become a will become the tyrant uh and yeah he does become the tyrant uh he would he would have I, I i it convinces me in a way that yes caesar was going to be the tyrant unfortunately their solution uh 
ends up, perhaps because of Brutus's idealism. Brutus, of course, is one of these people who thinks, oh, I think logically, so I'm going to give a very reasoned, logical speech. And everyone will go, ah, oh, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to add up all the positives and negatives of your speech and go that. And it's like, Mark Anthony's like, you know, friends, Romans, lend me, my, lend me your ears and, you know, whips that crowd up and gets them going. And it's like, oh, he was going to leave you lots of money. And it's like, oh, we're just like, and the crowd immediately switches to his side. And, and, um, and, and, you know, that's, that's like, you know, if it, if it, if it had been practical Cassius there, Cassius is like, no, you, you don't let that guy speak. You don't let, you don't, you don't let that guy get in front of a crowd. We'll be screwed. Um, but no, that's the, the, the noble idealism of, of, uh, Brutus that sinks, sinks them there. Uh, and I don't even know if it's noble idealism. It's, it's the idealist. Um, I mean, I mean, I guess an argue, you can argue in a way that the people who can cloak themselves in idealism that are actually pragma, pragma, pragmatic politicians underneath, pragmatic actors, there's so much of this play of, the conspirators, they're actors, and everyone's playing their part. And Brutus even indulges in the political theater of bathing his hands in blood and walking through the streets, which I think is, I actually think is, I don't know. It's one of these things of, it's a striking image, Brutus, I'll give you that, but it's also a terrifying, gross, gore-covered hands. And and indeed, um, uh, uh, Peter uh, Sacco in his play talks about how you know Anthony comes in and shakes each one of the conspirators' hands, and just think about you know all that dried, gooey blood and him 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 individuating each one of these people. It's no longer the conspirators; it's you, you know, it's you, Brutus, it's you, Cassius, it's you, all the all the other dudes who's of course you know names have completely escaped my my mind. So yes, that's my. That's my um, my reactions to uh, uh, Julius uh, Julius Caesar this time. I can't wait to hear what uh, Steve Steve Donahue has to say about it. Um, I would like to go. I, I also I also made a point of actually watching, not reading, because no time, no time. I got 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 no time of watching the um, the other. Well, watching. All of Titus Andronicus, and it's all its gross and and Jack, Jacobean revenge play glory, uh, which you know it's like it, I can see why that isn't taught in schools because it's got rape, it's got lots of murder, it's got horrible racism with uh, you know um, I don't know Shakespeare is great at doing these horrible foul you know you know black men villains um, who are actually. You watch the play, and I don't know if that's how it's staged or whatever, but you get the sense it's like he actually sympathizes. You think it's like, yeah, fuck, fuck the society that that has spit on Aaron, so that he is. I mean, and that may be me projecting. It's like you know, screw the society. It's like they deserve Aaron. They deserve his anger. It's like they deserve the terrorist. I, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, that that the, the, it's so it's. I'm sure it's 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 what the. You know, so it, I, I can see why this is way too, way too gnarly for, uh, for, um, to do in, uh, probably in a, in a high school setting, uh, for your, for your Shakespeare. Even though it's actually, it's very vigorous, very like, wow. It's like, uh, at least the productions I watched was just like, wow, this is, this is a, this is a fun play to watch and all its bloody murder. And, um, it's interesting how, um, the production actually kind of played a, some of it for like laughs and stuff like that, which I think it kind of goes. It's a, it's a, it's a crowd pleasing play, even if it didn't please a lot of critics, um, for, for some, a lot of its thing. Um, and now Henry, Henry the fourth, part one and part two. You got two plays in there, Luke Ash. It's that's that I think that's Dirty Pool, of, of which I've gotten through the first part one and about half, uh, probably quarter way into uh, uh, part two, um, which presents its own issues. I can see for like a high for a high school thing because it's full of history. It's like it's these are the history plays. Well, you know. Julius Caesar was like, okay, that's Roman history, but it was a nice little slice and it was very understandable and you could just jump into it and you could go. It's like, yeah, conspirators decide to try and depose Caesar, stab, stab, stabby, stabby, stab, and then there's civil war and blah, everyone dies uh, and, you know, and we're, and we're out. But this is like much more uh, Game of Thronesy, ha, ha, ha. War of the Roses, Game of Thronesy kind of thing where we're, we're into like all the little politics and there's, there's all this stuff. And then over on one, another side, there's Hal and, um, and, and Falstaff, Prince Hal and Falstaff. And, uh, 
I can see why uh, someone like you know Orson Welles, who uh, a went, wow, it's a fat coward. I'm gonna I'm gonna totally take this and make and shape it into Chimes of Midnight and make it in my own thing. But I can also see that uh, for a modern audience that that's actually the part of the play that's actually that plays better that seems more interesting i'm i'm always sparking up of of like oh hey there's like there's a there's a part where um uh falstaff uh just gets into his just, just you know it, it's 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 not you know uh um it, it's 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 the, it's the uh it's this thing of what is honor you know you know you know cuz he's like yay but but how if honor pricked me off when I come on, how then can honor set to a leg? No, an arm, nor take away the grief of a wound. No, honor hath no skill in surgery then. No, what is honor? A word. What is in that word honor? What is that honor? Air, a trim reckoning. Who hath it? He that died a Wednesday, doth he feel it? No, doth he hear it? No, tis insensible then. Yea, to the dead, but it will not live with the living. No, why? Detraction will not suffer it, therefore I'll none of it. Honor is a mere scutcheon, and so ends my catechism. It's like, ah, uh, this is, you know, we have all the kind of the noble great men of Shakespeare. It's like, no, Falstaff, he's a, he's like a coward and a and a guy who's like, I love life. I love life more than I love honor. Um, and I know there's arguments that say, oh, no, he's doing this to to make up. He's he's actually a great dude. It's like, no, actually, I think he's a complete ass. He's a complete scoundrel and complete. He's a thief and he's a and he's corrupt and he's um, totally fascinating. And he's and he sort of pops out of, of Shakespeare in a way that um, someone like Brutus and even someone like Cassius uh, doesn't who, you know, oh, you think he's just going to be this comedic, like, toss-off character when he's like, oh, no, actually, this is, this is the popularity. This is, when they, when they, when um, they talk about the popularity of these plays, they talk about, oh, Falstaff, Falstaff. And, um, you know, Prince Hal coming off as a kind of a calculating asshole, at least at the beginning here, of like, oh, I'm going to play, I'm going to play the Lausch kind of, um, wastrel, um, um, rich, rich kid, but that way I'll look even better when I, burst onto the stage is heroic Hal, and it's just like oh man you're a complete you know i if this is with the 80s you'd be just you'd just be some coke snorting party boy that i would uh i you know you would despise who would then go on to run a corporation that is he inherited from his dad at least that's that's my that's my um my my thing and you know and i know that things do not end well for falstaff uh with his relationship with uh uh prince 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 hal uh, future, future Henry V, I believe. Uh, don't, don't quote me on that. I've, I've, my, all my spotty, spottiness of history. So yes, that's all the plays. Oh God. Um, okay. I'm going to quickly, quickly say, and at the same time of all this in the rebel cause of poetry, uh, words, words everywhere, Mark at words, words everywhere is doing, uh, sonnets, doing the sonnets of Shakespeare. And again, reading all the sonnets, but he's great. He's graciously uh, curated it down to just like here's here's seven son sonnets for the for this week and then we'll do another seven and then do another seven uh, so we can we'll I'll, I'll polish off a good number of sonnets so this this week um the one that i've i've selected just talk about here is uh sonnet 12 which is when i do count the clock that tells the time and see the brave day sunk in hideous night when I behold the violet past prime and sable curls all silvered with silvered over with white, when lofty trees I see barren of leaves, which erst from heat did canopy the herd, and summer's green all girded up in sheaves, borne on the briar with white and bristly beard, then of thy beauty I do question make that thou among the wastes of time must go, since sweets and beauties do themselves forsake and die as fast as they see others grow. And nothing gainst time's scythe can make defense, say breed to brave when he takes the hence. So yes, there's the whole, I, I, I mentioned that on an earlier thing of like, oh, breeders, breeder, bre breeder propaganda. I, I say this to someone who, uh, just in my own personal life, TMI, TMI, it's not interested in, 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 in making, in making forth issue of breeding. Um, 
And though I, I reading reading the poem and letting the poem kind of sink in more, it's like there there is also just a sort of thing. It's like yeah, well, you can breed. That's I guess that's the only thing you can do. However, for the most of us, I can't remember. I I can't particularly. I know I know nothing of my great great grandfather, great great grandmother. Um, that's all lost to time. So I guess maybe I hold their genetics as a as we are we are uh, living breathing uh, like gene gene containers that uh, go along and uh, if if we're quote successful in the evolutionary sense or in any any species wide sense we spread our seed or uh, hey uh, by an ecological way I've I've if, if I chop chop off my line here I've I've probably done to more to help the environment than uh, than than a lot of people um <laughs> but yeah so uh it's it's an interesting it's an interesting obviously it's an interesting poem it's by william shakespeare and that's all very interesting um stuff like you know when i see the brave sun sunk in hideous night it's like it's an interesting image of of you know a life is a day and it sinks into death into night and then there's nothing more. Well, I guess there's the star and the moon above. But it's it's that hideous, hideous night, which I guess wouldn't be stars and moon above, because that would be quite lovely. This is hideous black void night, I I, I would say. And it's like it's an it's an interesting thought of like, you know, are we that afraid of death? Death's scythe chopping us all down. Uh I mean, I guess on a personal level, um, if I was if I was a Roman general come back and uh, suddenly a whole bunch of guys were coming at me with knives I'd be like oh I love life and get the hell away from me if I was Falstaff Falstaff saying screw honor I love life more I love life more um so uh, I don't know it's there's, there's that there's that I guess there's it's it, there's a philosophical my Brutus side is like uh why should we fear death but then there's the Falstaff side no I love life so as much as I argue with the poem I, I, there's those two sides, those two sides of like, you know, death's inevitability, you know, as di there's day and then there's night, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to escape the two that that's just, that is, that is, that is nature. Um, I mean, I know that people are arguing like we, we we're going to fight against death. We're going to, we're going to overcome it. We have a youth obsessed culture and we have the thing of, we're going to, um, we're going, we're going to, we're going to continue on. We're going to live forever. Uh, we're going to be post-human. And it's like, yeah, and then we're not human anymore. Part of, to be human is to die. Of course, maybe to be human is to only live until you're 40 and then die or 50 and then die of a heart attack or then uh, 60 and 70 uh, die of cancer. So we, 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 we have uh, in our technologies and all that have, have surpassed that. So I guess there's that constant negotiation of what is natural, what is nature. Uh, and uh, I guess that's a part of what this poem, this 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 thing does. I mean, I know in and the and the other sonnets Shakespeare talks about his verse being in some ways something that's going to be the immortal part that's going to live on. And well, that works for Shakespeare. That works for Chaucer. Uh, it's not going to work for this video. I I I I have a feeling that this video will not live live that long <laughs> in the in the general realm of things. Um. Um. Uh, so I'm going to die and uh, this video will get deleted. More videos later!